To anyone thinks that this camera is garbage or it doesn't have the capacity to be a professional level camera, I think you're wrong. Focus, cool. Is there any other creator who really struggles with constantly changing your YouTube setup because I like this setup, I like my previous setup, and I just I can't decide. So it's probably never gonna change. Anyways, today we're talking about this little guy, the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. Obviously there's just something different about this phone that I just wanna talk about my experience as a first timer using a foldable phone. A lot of reviews surrounding this phone come from creators who have used the previous generations or maybe the Z Fold or um, the Motorola Razr that folds like this. And so they come from a place from experience, but I wanna talk about as someone who may be purchasing this as a first time foldable phone, what the experience is really like and if it's worth it. I wanna say that Samsung has nothing to do with this video. I purchased this phone with my own money and I've been using it the past handful of weeks, so it's not like a super long-term review. All right, so first, let's talk about the design. So spoiler alert right off the bat, this is definitely the most fun phone that I've used in a very long time. Now, before you go running to the headlines of, I'm saying this is the best phone I've used in a long time, not necessarily the case. I said it's the most fun phone, and that's because obviously 99% of the phones that exist out there, and especially all the ones that I've tested out, how does Greg from Greggles TV call it? A candy bar phone, that's right. You know, like these, candy bar phones, all of them. They don't fold. You can tell which phone they are kind of from the back, but especially from the front, there's nothing super inherently different about them. And so yes, while I do somewhat agree with Linus' uh, tech tips. Why go to all the effort of engineering a folding screen just so that you can use a phone that fundamentally looks exactly like the one that you've been using for the last four years? But I'd argue that there are definitely some different features that stand out from this that you can only get from a phone like this. Now the phone build is just in line with every other Samsung phone that I've used. It feels like premium materials. The hinge is really satisfying. And even after, after weeks of use, I don't have any like reason to believe that this is breaking anytime soon. Now it does take some getting used to with the actual hinge because at any other viewing angle, like straight on, it looks fine, but you can see in the reflection there, both with the screen off as well as with it on. If I start going at more extreme angles, you can definitely see the fold and you can 100% feel it. And it's not great that it's right in the middle of the uh, phone itself because you are constantly swiping um, in that direction over top of it. So it's not uncomfortable per se, but you know, it takes some getting used to, but after a couple days, you don't really like think about it too much. Now, some people love it, some people hate it, but it is a very tall and skinny phone. It reminds me very much of the Sony Xperia line, and I personally love it. That was a 21 by nine aspect ratio. This is a 22 by nine aspect ratio. So a lot of like video content's gonna be very black barred, but for any ultra wide content, it looks great. But I personally love the uh, tall and skinny look rather than the larger and fatter. That's why I went with the flip and not the fold. I don't like the feeling of like stretching my hands out this way. And while the power button is in a nice placement, I don't really like the volume rocker up. It's like really far up. You have to really shimmy your hand. Even like I have decently like average guy hands and uh, it's, it's pretty up there. The speakers are actually really solid. Obviously USB type C, that's all fine. All right, so now let's talk about the actual camera. So you have a 10 megapixel front facing selfie camera and then two 12 megapixel uh, cameras on the back, a ultra wide and a regular wide. Now the actual final results of photos and videos that you can get from the stock camera apps, the quality is good. It's, it's not trash like some people are saying. 
It's just also not like revolutionary. So a lot of people think because this is a flagship, it also needs to be like far superior than the previous generation in terms of camera. This is a flagship and this is new and fancy because of the fold. The cameras are very similar to the S21 line that I've used before. But yeah, I've never been a super fan, especially of photos on Samsung phones, but personal preference. What I really wanna talk about is the different use cases that you get because of the fold. And so one of the things that I do like is when you are looking at the actual display, um, the UI is very responsive to the fold. As soon as I start to bend it, you can see that the preview goes to one side and then you have all of your controls over here. And this is also the same, if I go into uh, video mode, and just to really sell it, I'm gonna to go to pro video mode. Um, you can see that it takes up the full screen because that's, I have the aspect ratio set to 21.9, so not, there's a slight back bar, can go 22.9. Um, but as soon as I start to bend it, you can see that the video preview goes to one side and I have all of my controls over here. There is kind of a weird UI glitch um, because you can actually switch the preview to the other side, but in pro mode, it doesn't move the controls. So now your controls are over top of the preview and then some controls over here. So that's a little funky, but not a huge deal. Obviously this also allows people, mostly for photos, but if you wanted to take vertical, vertical video, you can set the phone down and now you have basically a little tripod. So for all you TikTok people, you can set this down or whatever, and then, you know, go back and do your thing. Now, another cool thing that you can do when you have really any of the camera modes open on the back here is turn on the live preview in the front and you can see it pop up there. Now it is kind of useless for like this normal video mode, because when you're holding it, you know, horizontally as you normally would for video, this is now a vertical display. And then if you hold it for portrait for like, again, social media, now you have a horizontal display. So this doesn't make too much sense to me. Now, while I'll never really use the live preview like that for the front, where I do think this screen can be cool and useful for taking photos or videos is when you have the phone folded uh, over still. I like the fact that your selfie camera this way can become your main camera. So if you double click the power button, then you will see the live preview come up and it defaults to photo, but you can swipe over and get video. And this is actually really comfortable. So again, it is a compressed version. So like if you hold it out, you can tell at least if your faces are in frame. Um, but then all you do is just tap anywhere on here and it does a quick like two second timer and then takes the picture because it is kind of awkward to hold it if you don't have big hands, um, but you can hold it comfortably down here, just tap, reset, and then in two or three seconds, it takes the photo. Or you can swipe over to video mode. Uh, you'll see the little recording dot again, tap anywhere on it and then in two or three second delay, it's recording. And you can see there the little run time and everything start to go up. And so for a quick selfie with your friends or a quick, you know, talking head clip, I think this is actually really cool. Now, obviously you don't get any choices in terms of uh, settings really. So if we actually go in and take a look at the photos, you can see that they are all square um, rather than any other aspect ratio. So whether it's the video clip or a still photo, there's going to be in that square format uh, when you take them with the live preview. I haven't seen any setting to change that, but maybe I'm missing something and you guys can let me know down in the comments below. So there definitely is a debate. Is this phone worth it over something like an S21 or any other existing phone? And if you're an enthusiast like me who just really enjoys a new experience, I think you would have a lot of fun playing around with a foldable phone because every day there has been something to discover, like all those little like, oh, you can preview if you, you know, fold it halfway or uh, the, you know, recording, taking selfies on the back. Like those are just new experiences that you don't necessarily get with a 
traditional phone style. Now you do have to be mindful of like the screen isn't as strong as other traditional phone screens. They definitely improved it. I haven't scratched mine, but I also baby my stuff. So um, if you're hard on your phones, this may not be the one for you just yet. Battery life on this thing is definitely pretty rough. Like a lot of people are saying, this has been like a secondary phone for me and it's still pretty easy to kill definitely within a day. All right, sorry to interrupt this video, future day later me talking. I just got back in from shooting a sequence of my son riding his first bike, yay. Technically tri school, but I mean, first time riding by himself with all pedals and stuff, good accomplishment, but also a good test for uh, this. When I went outside with him, all I brought was the phone and a gimbal and a cheap one at that. This is the Moza Mini MX. I think it's seriously like 80 bucks or something. Also, instead of using a app like Filmic Pro, while that would have been fine, I really wanted to see what Samsung's colors were looking like in the pro mode. So everything you're about to see was done in the pro mode and I'll share my thoughts right after, but just check this out. Are you okay? All right, so what'd you think of that? Um, honestly, I'm pretty impressed. As I said in the beginning of this video, when you're in the standard camera app in the standard camera modes, whether that's photo or video, they come out fine, just kind of whatever, flagship quality photos, videos. But Samsung has a really solid pro mode. The Sony Xperia One line still has the best professional camera apps, I would say but this is a very close second. Being able to natively control the ISO, the white balance, the manual versus autofocus, having the HDR10, the shutter speed, and even more professional features like having a histogram up there at the top, and of course, focus peaking when you go into manual focus, it's awesome. You just literally, once you move it around and get something in focus, it turns green to let you know. And then as soon as you take your finger off the focus slider, it goes away. Features like that are really impressive. And when it comes to the final results, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. When I compare it to what I consider to be pretty much the best camera phone out currently, which is the iPhone 12 Pro Max, obviously next week we'll see the iPhone 13. You know, I took a couple sample clips side by side and again, just using the stock video app, they both are very good. They're both incredibly sharp. The dynamic range is pretty good. The noise level, as long as you're in decent light is fine. But where this suffers is the phone is auto exposing everything. And so it thinks, hey, I just want the brightest, most contrasty image possible, where since I was in control of the exposure on this, I was able to get a more what I think is cinematic feeling vibe. Now, honestly, there was a moment where I was extremely torn, and that is when I stepped into the light from the sun, the, the sun was setting behind me. So the iPhone had much better colors and accuracy um, on the sun on my face. It didn't look like blocky and terrible. This was pretty rough in terms of the colors, in my opinion, but the flaring issue was way more noticeable on here. You had that very harsh dot of a flare that showed up here where this had a relatively nice bloom. It wasn't, you know, like a, a cinema lens quality flare, but for a phone, I thought it looked pretty good. So for 90% of that clip, I would give the win to the fact that this has a pro mode. Again, the physical camera properties are about equal. So it's not the Samsung has a better camera than the iPhone or 
vice versa. This has better software and more professional settings that allow me to customize the exposure compared to this. Now, again, if I took Filmic Pro on here with Log V3 against this, that'd be an interesting battle. If you guys wanna see that, let me know. I may do that with the Pixel 6 Pro versus the iPhone 13, so get subscribed if you wanna see that. But out of the box with no crazy extra accessories without having to buy any third-party professional apps, this gives you so much good control. By the way, I'm on the screen because I'm uploading the footage right now to edit it. But yeah, so to anyone who thinks that this camera is garbage or it doesn't have the capacity to be a professional level camera, I think you're wrong. But yeah, I'm really impressed with this phone. Um, anyway, back to previous day me to finish off the video. Alrighty guys, there you have it. That is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip Three, almost said Z Fold. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you have this phone? Have you played around with any foldable phones? What are your thoughts on them? And of course, what did you think about the camera and how far we can push it? If you enjoyed videos like this, don't forget to get subscribed. We got, uh, by the time you're seeing this video, actually the iPhone, I 13 Pro Max is arriving today, I believe, or in a couple days if I get this video done earlier in the week. We got the Pixel 6 Pro coming. I mean, we are in full on uh, tech season here, so don't miss out on any future videos. Appreciate all the support, and I'll see you guys in the next video.